An SABC News presentation. Welcome to Interface. My name is Tim Samachele. The spotlight falls on the mining industry this week. Anglo Platinum has announced that it plans to close some of its shafts and lay off 14,000 workers in the process. Now, there's been a huge outcry against this move, particularly coming from the ANC and the government. Now, tonight on Interface, we delve deeper into this. And before we chat to our guests, let's take a quick look at this insert compiled by Genosi Queenie. Fears of rising unemployment are mounting following mining company Amplat's decision to restructure. The company had been conducting a review of its operations from the beginning of 2012. Last year, outgoing Anglo-American CEO Cynthia Carroll warned that the company will have to make tough decisions in order to compete successfully in the global market. Analysts say most mining companies will have to restructure as most of them are operating at a loss. Rising electricity and labor costs, as well as the declining global demand for platinum and other minerals, have contributed to loss of earnings in the mining industry. While mining bosses are concerned about losses, workers are worried that their wages are lower than the cost of living. Union bosses are calling on Angloplat to reconsider its decision with the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union, AMCU, calling for the Department of Minerals and Energy to intervene. On the other hand, the National Union of Mine Workers has expressed shock at the company's decision to lay off 14,000 workers and have called for talks. However, there is light at the end of the tunnel, with Amplat saying it will place a third of the miners in other operations and reskill the remaining two-thirds. Unfortunately, we have a technical problem tonight, so we won't be able to take your SMSs, but we do welcome your thoughts on our Facebook page. That is Interface on SABC3. That's how you find us. Now, tonight's guests are Peggy Sibia is the CEO of the Chamber of Mines. Lisiba Sishoka is with the National Union of Mine Workers, and Lone Sharp is a labor economist. A warm welcome to all three of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. let's start with you. Here's a business. It says we're having some problems. Demand for platinum is uh, declining. We need to restructure high costs, and as a result, we're going to close some of our shafts. Are they not well within their rights to do so? Well, look, they are indeed well within their rights to do so, but they must bear in mind that the wealth that they have have been created by human beings. Uh, so generally, from where we come from as the NUM, we believe that everyone, it's common knowledge, that mining is a business of cycles mm -hmm. and therefore at, at times it will hit a high and at times it will hit a low and therefore it is therefore incumbent upon the uh, those that are in leadership of the companies to ensure that they are able to um, to plan very well uh, so that they can anticipate that there will be changes in the external environment and they should be ready for those changes it can't be right that it now appears as if uh, something terrible just fell upon them and therefore they need to dismiss 14,000 workers. It doesn't work that way. Lone, is it just a matter of cycles or is there something more happening here? No, there's definitely something more going on. In 1994, the South African mining sector employed 1.4 million people. Today, the sector employs just 523,000. There's been a dramatic decline in employment in mining for several reasons. In 1995, uh, with the Labor Relations Act, unionization was greatly increased in the mining sector. Currently, 81% of workers in mining are unionized. In 1996, uh, minimum wages were introduced in the mining sector. In 2004, we had the introduction of, or the expropriation of mining rights. Mm -hmm. Over the last five years, we've had administrative chaos in the administration of mining licenses. 
So there's much more going on in South African mining and employment related to it than simply the global cycle. But Lesiba makes the point that as a company, as a business, you survey the, 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 the landscape, you know the, the issues that are going to come up, you plan for them. You know that there's going to be cycles, you know that there are going to be labor issues. Why didn't this company do that? Well, uh, the question is why did shareholders start putting pressure on Amplats to divest itself of its South African operations? Uh, because the pressure doesn't come from the CEO, the pressure comes from the shareholders. What is causing the shareholders to insist that companies like Anglo-American and others disinvest from their South African mining operations? Uh, I think that's a complicated question, but the kind of people who should be answering it are not us, mm -hmm. but the Department of Mineral Resources. I think the Department of Mineral Resources is systematically failing the South African mining sector. Mr. Speer, the government and the ruling party, uh, in effect, have called this move reckless and sensitive, that you know this is not what should be happening in, in this dispensation. Are they being fair on this company when they say that? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to address this issue because it's extremely important. I would like to indicate, though, that uh, I am employed by the Chamber of Mines of whom Anglo Platinum is a member. I'm not representing Anglo Platinum. They are very capable to represent themselves. I would like just to give a picture about the, the Platinum sector. It is not only Anglo-American, which is uh, Anglo Platinum, which is struggling. Other platinum producers are struggling because the quality of the ore body is declining. It is getting deeper and as Sharp indicated, the cost of production, labor plus others, in this regard among others, electricity, are increasing. Mm -hmm. When one dem looks at the demand, the demand is low and going down. The prices uh, in terms of how much one can get for the ounce of platinum is not stable but also goes down periodically. It's the combination of those. Planning, as Lesiba indicates, yes, some planning. Mm -hmm. And you may find that if you look at the platinum sector, 60% of the mines are either breaking even or making losses. Mm -hmm. The reverse of that is saying only 40% are making profit. Why are they continue to operate when they are breaking even or making losses? Because they are hoping for a better cycle. And if it does not come, then it becomes a problem. Anglo Platinum has been working on this program now for about a year. Mm -hmm. Because they were hoping for better times, but the better times are not coming. But can a company operating in a country like South Africa, where we have massive unemployment, where we have all of these issues, can a company sit down and say, look, we're breaking evening or we are making a, a loss, therefore we're going to restructure and we're going to lose X number of jobs without consulting extensively, consulting the government, consulting the union, con consulting everybody? Can a there are do two that? pieces of legislation which are covering this. Mm. One is Mineral Pet and Petroleum Resources Development Act. And it is clear that if the company suspects that there is going to be something which needs to happen, it needs to see what it needs to do to prevent it. Mm. And then the Labor Relations Act. It says then you need to consult properly. And therefore Anglo Platinum is saying, looking at what we have done, it seems that we may need to retrench 14,000 people. But the government says now they're doing start, so unilaterally without consultation. Let, let's start the consultation process. <coughs> According to the labor relations process, it is 60 days of consulting. Okay. And it is my understanding that Anglo Platinum is prepared to extend that to 90 days, 100 days of consulting with the intention of listening and saying, if what they are looking at doing is incorrect. Mm. There are some people, whether it's the unions or the government or the ANC, who have better ideas. Let those ideas be put on the table and be explored appropriately. Is that what happened? No, Dembisa. What needs to have happened here is that uh, because the number of jobs that are uh, on the line are many, mm -hmm. so Anglo Platinum should have followed the MPRDA uh, section 52 
uh, to consult with the department uh, as, a, as a matter of beginning the process so that the department can uh, appoint an investigator to investigate what the real problems are. But instead of doing so, uh, Amplas has decided um, on shortcut uh, in, in terms of section 189 of the labor relations act and went public without uh, first informing uh, the department okay. but also they should have uh, informed us within uh, the necessary structures of midgate okay all right did this company take shortcuts are these jobs going to be lost these are the questions we're going to be looking at right after this break and remember that you can get involved in this discussion by checking us on our Facebook page. It's Interface on SABC3. That's how you find us. And uh, we'll be back right after this. And we're back on Interface Talking Mining and uh, we're chatting to Peggy Smear, the CEO of the Chamber of Mines, Lone Sharp, who is a labor economist, and Disiba Sishoka, who is with the National Union of Mine Workers. Just to note that we did invite Amplatz and they were not available for comment and that's why they're not part of this discussion. So we will continue without them. And remember that you can join the conversation Interface on SABC3. That's how we talk to each other on Facebook and we have a lot of your messages and we'll, we'll be touching them as we go along on the show. Do keep them coming and do keep that conversation going. Lone, the ANC and particularly the minister has said that this company and any other mining company that wishes to do this has misrepresented its intentions. Is that fair? Is that really what's happened? No, not at all. I think the Ministry of Mineral Resources is in such chaos that it's not in touch with developments on a day-to-day -day basis in the biggest mines in the country. The minister has clearly indicated that she's out of touch with realities in the mining sector and world commodity markets. It's a great pity that she has uh, uh, vented her spleen as far as Amplatz is concerned. I go back to the point, what is occurring in mining is a systematic failure of government policies over the last 15 years. Amplatz is not the first and it's not going to be the last. We're expecting in our forecasting unit at Adcorp, we're expecting 220,000 job losses in mining over the next four years. So mining is in employment chaos. This is not the last you're going to get. I think it's uh, sad that Amplatz has been marginalized and singled out uh, in this situation. But let's talk about the, the sector as a whole. Mm. My understanding is that a company gets its license, its mining license, based on certain conditions that the government will have put in place. And one of those conditions, I assume, is jobs that you will secure X number of jobs over a period of time. And so if you come out and you say, look, we're not making as much profit as we intended to, so we're going to cut these jobs hmm. and we're going to do it unilaterally, as the minister says, that you are in violation of your mining license. Not no, so. not at all. Uh, the Mineral Resources uh, Development Act does not envisage, envisage a situation where the minister is co-responsible with the CEOs of mining companies for socio-economic outcomes. I think the ministers uh, clearly overreached her authority in this case. Uh, it's an unprecedented adventure of the minister into Amplatt's private affairs. Uh, I think if the minister were asking what government policy has done to cause these systematic failures of employment in mining, we would have moved a step forward. But to thump her fist on the table and say that Amplatz is responsible for unemployment in the sector is missing the point altogether. Can we move away from Amplatz, uh, that is me, and we say... May, may I request, though, that uh, yeah. I think loan is a bit too harsh on the DMR. There has there been some mistakes? Yes, there have been. Mm. But to say shambles, as he gives the impression that it's administrative shambles, I think it's a bit too harsh. The minister knows and is experienced 
in mineral resources, the DG and their teams. Mm. I think generally they require our support. And for us as a Chamber of Mines in the mining industry, we say we partner with DMR as much as we partner with the unions, yeah. the foremost of which is uh, NUM. This is the question I want to bring solve to the though. problems. Here's the problem on the table, but away from MPLATS and looking at the sector as a whole, isn't it the government's responsibility when it comes to job losses and job creation to monitor what private companies are doing and if they see something like this where 14,000 jobs are at stake, come up, speak up, thump their fists on the table and say, not so, not in this country. Aren't they within their rights to do so? They are within their rights. We have the mining industry growth, development and employment task team which has been running for about three years. That is where the debates have been taking place, are taking place. We have discussed the platinum crisis in that forum. We continue to do so. And in my view as well, we need to be saying there is a likely loss of 14,000 jobs. But Anglo Platinum has said we have a plan. We are going to implement a plan of creating different jobs for which people are trainable of a similar number. And therefore, in terms of Anglo Platinum, they need to be given the credit of an effort of ensuring that there is no major net loss of jobs, but there are going to be different kinds of jobs. Listen, but no major net loss of jobs here. What's the crisis? Well, look, the first thing I need to indicate that uh, when they talk about these jobs, you're talking about a loss of high quality jobs and you are talking about the creation of low quality jobs because what they are talking about here is uh, they are saying that many of these workers will then be taken to go and build houses so if you look at the amount of money that uh, construction workers earn it's going to be less than what they were earning but also those jobs are not sustainable but I also want to point out uh, in terms of what Loon said about the ministry, it is true that the department, uh, not the department, but AMPLAS has gone against uh, their commitment. Uh, when they applied for new order mining rights, mm. they indicated that uh, this is their plan, a 50-year plan that they put over the table. Then just two, three years later, they are retrenching and going against the plan they put on the table. So clearly, uh, the department has got a case here. What's your response to that? My response is simple. The Department of Mineral Resources created the circumstances in the mining sector that are leading to losses of jobs on a systematic basis. But there's a 50-year plan, the Siba mentioned. No, we have to go back to what the department's actions have been that are causing job losses on this scale and see what uh, needs to be done. For example, there is administrative chaos, notwithstanding what Becky says. There is administrative chaos in the, in the awarding of mining licenses. There was expropriation without compensation of mining rights in South Africa. Unionization has been uh, advanced as a pact between organized labor and government. Uh, minimum wages since 1996 have been rising at uneconomic rates. The mining uh, sector in South Africa is in systematic trouble and uh, one or two companies uh, is, is not, uh, is, is not uh, going to reverse that. <coughs> All right, I I, I, we've got to take a quick break, and I, I can see that Lesiba also wants to uh, say something around the wages and how much they are, but we've got to take a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue with this discussion, and also we ask the question, to nationalize or not to nationalize? Stay tuned. Back to Interface, we're talking mining tonight and your messages on Facebook are coming through thick and fast. We won't have time to go through all of them, but I just want to highlight some of them. Uh, Debo Hompofu says, nationalization of those mines, especially the ones that uh, the company is struggling to keep up with, is the way to go. Fanya Namtinyana says, I think that uh, the government needs to intervene 
with this. And uh, Morty Rachadebi says, Anglo Platinum is holding the government at ransom, forcing the government to implement the resolution that was taken at the conference in Mangawung, and that is to increase the taxes on the industry. Sandy Sosokula says, strikes cause mines to lose profits. So at the end of the day, mining bosses don't have any option because they also need to make a profit. That's what it's about at the end of the day. And uh, Bedayat J. Malimamake says, the government must take Take over where the capitalists are failing. Those are just some of the messages coming through on Facebook. There are lots of them, but the majority of them are saying, let's just nationalize, let the government take over these shafts. If this company is not able to uh, keep up with whatever the costs are, then let the government do the job. Isn't that fair? No, what is at stake here is how economic activity is organized and how we provide the right incentives for long-term economic growth. Nationalizing the mines is uh, a road to ruin. Uh, it has never worked in any situation. You only need to look at the gap between North and South Korea, the gap between Havana and Miami, the gap between East and West Berlin to see that there's no question okay. capitalism is the, is the long-term answer to wealth and job creation. Is capitalism not failing here? Well, of course, it, it, it is failing, but the reality of the matter is you can't uh, therefore nationalize, nationalize debt. Uh, we're simply saying that what needs to happen is, for instance, if Amplas is unable to run those shafts, mm. uh, it must just hand over the, mineral, uh, the mining licenses, uh, put those shafts on public auction. Those that are willing to operate and are able to deal with the challenges at hand, uh, they must operate. But uh, doesn't that go against what you said earlier about the cycles? Because this company is not saying we won't in perpetuity be able yeah. to operate these, uh, these shafts. It's just right now we can't and therefore we've got laid people off now. Well, look, um, um, uh, th that does not g uh, go against what I said earlier. What I said is, is, is simple. You, if you can't operate because we don't know how long uh, you are going to be mothballing those shafts. Uh, if you are going to be mothballing them uh, maybe for five or ten years just because the challenges are, are, are staying there, yeah. but if there are uh, other people that are prepared to run them uh, in spite of the challenges, let them run them. Mr. We, are, we are in a, a constitutional democracy. Mm. That's the beauty of South Africa. And the MPRDA, they anticipated a situation like this. And therefore, care and maintenance is part of MPRDA. And therefore, when Anglo Platinum is saying we're going to put this under care and maintenance, we can quote clause 52 of the MPRDA, it anticipated that, and that's mm. what they are going to do. Really from where we sit is, we, we say there is somewhere between 60 and 90 days where the trade unions, all of them which are affected, the government departments led by DMR, and I'm saying departments because the Department of Labor has got to be involved as mm. well, mm. with uh, Anglo Plat in this regard, they need to get their heads together and say, Anglo Platinum, take us through options that you have looked at. Why is option one not good, option two not good, option three not good? Once Shouldn't you have that done have that... have started before coming publicly and saying, oh, it looks like this is what we're going to do. Past imperfect, present challenging, let's look at it and say, <laughs> Section 189 is saying, let them start with a consultation. At some stage as well, it prevents them to consult when they are not ready with alternatives. And that's what we need to be doing in the next three months. And therefore, the, the, the stage is set for proper, effective consultation involving all the stakeholders who are involved. What should they have done? Well, look, like I've said before, <clears throat> in terms of the MPRDA Section 52, they, they need to have notified the minister. But they, there are also forums, like Midget, where they should have uh, tabled um, their, their challenges. I mean, we just have um, a meeting with them in December. They've never indicated to us that uh, they're running in serious trouble and therefore they would have to retrench come early January. But here, the question I'm asking is, here's a company saying we are not making a profit and we are in it to make a profit. Mm -hmm. what, what should they do besides laying off the people? They should have uh, informed us of the stakeholders. What should they do uh, going forward though? Well, look, uh, this is very clear. They should have informed us so that we see if we can come up with plans. But they didn't. Now what? 
Let me just look at this. It's about MIGDET. Let's put the record straight. There is a forum which is discussing platinum. And they have gone through, they have engaged with a number of government departments. They have engaged with the National Treasury. They have gone even to the South African Reserve Bank and said, since you, you, you put gold on stock, do the same for platinum. And therefore, the issue of platinum is not really new. It has been discussed. We're running out of time, and mm. I, I'd like us to just find a way forward. Now, this, this has happened the way it has happened. They should have consulted, they didn't. Or they didn't consult as extensively as yeah. you would have liked. But what now? I think... Uh, I think what okay, let's, let's give this mm. a chance and then go. From where we stand, the consultation period, we've got 60 days to consult uh, in terms of the Labor Relations Act now. Yeah. And I think we are on the right track now. We have begun the consultation uh, in the weeks that lie ahead. Uh, we are quite confident from what Amplats have said that it is prepared to even extend that to 90 days. Okay. Uh, we will come up with proposal uh, so that we can look into them. Quick one, Lo. I think uh, Becky's idea of having a mining codessa where we can re-examine the mining sector in total. Clearly mining is not meeting the employment objectives of the government. Why is that the case? Why are we seeing hundreds of thousands of jobs being lost over a 10-year period? Okay. I think we need to go back, examine the causes, Otherwise, uh, we're going to be pointing fingers at individual companies needlessly. All right. We're going to have to watch this one as it unfolds. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you so much to my guests for coming through to talk to us about this issue. Remember that if you want to continue chatting about this, you can email us, interface on 3 at sabc.co.za, or catch us on Facebook, that is interface on SABC3. From me, Temisa Machel, and the team, good night.